I was actually thinking that because Bernard is right, Jamie. How many times have we had Leinster where not everybody was at full tilt? It might have been Jemson Gibson Park last week, but not everybody is there. This feels like the first time we've seen that complete performance from the whole team. So what's different? I don't know. We'd have to ask the coaches. But like, obviously, the, the obvious one is like the, the defensive system is is different. It's a lot more aggressive, particularly when you start getting ahead. You're forcing teams to try to do something more, which kind of happened today a little bit and played into Leinster's hands. And that defensive system, I'm sure Nina Barr as well is bringing a lot to it in terms of you, you see how abrasive they are around the, the collision zone. They're usually sending in two, if not three guys, to defensive rooks, to counter rook it, make it an absolute mess as well and slow down that ball. So a lot of that stuff isn't, you, you don't need a skill set to do it, you need a mindset to do it. And they definitely have that mindset of, of attacking any opportunities they can in the game. Yeah, it just, it feels like it was their day in the way that it was just not, nothing seemed to go right for La Rochelle. Ronan O'Gara said before the game, Fiona, they were going to have to be at a nine across the pitch for them to do it. It's hard to pick out any players he had for his team today who were at a nine. Yeah, but I think that came down from Leinster's pressure. Yeah. They didn't allow them, like Bernard showed a piece beforehand where they got that, La Rochelle got front football and they'd go off that. They didn't get that today and that came from Leinster's defence. But I'll go back, I think there was a mindset shift. There was a dog in them that they went after every opportunity. Yes, partly defence, but also in attack, they were ruthless. And I'd love to know if they did anything different this week in, ter this week in the lead into it in terms of their mindset shift. Yeah, just, just on their defence, it's so hard to measure line speed, OK? So, but there is a stat that I think is, is relevant to it and it's called PP. DA, right? So it's basically passes per defensive action. Last year, Leinster were ranked 69th across the teams in Super Rugby, Premiership, Top 14 and URC. Already this season, before today's game, they're down to third. That is phenomenal. So that means that's, that's the amount of passes teams can get against you. So it tells you the story. And today, I'd say they ramped that up. I would be shocked if they weren't one in the world after today because that's a good La Rochelle team who know how to play against the Blitz and they shut them down at source. Bernard talked about emotion before the game and you listen to people like Jurgen Klopp talking about mentality monsters and Leinster have been questioned on that in the past. So I guess it's like how do they turn this into a winning culture suddenly and how much of a statement does today change the way that they approach that now, Jamie? Because that has been the big question mark over them. But not like the willingness and the mindset to win is always there in these players, right? They wouldn't be at the level that they're at if, you know, if they didn't have that. And when they look back at the games, particularly when they've lost La Rochelle, they've been close games. They've yeah. been there, thereabouts. So, so they have full faith in, in the way that they're playing. Um, so uh, it's kind of hard to say, is there, uh, personally, is there a massive change in anything in particular in terms of the mindset point of view? I don't think so. I think it's a way in terms of they've tweaked parts of the game that they're playing. We all saw how, over the years how great they have been attacking-wise. So for me, the biggest thing has been their mindset in defence. It's a lot more aggressive, shuts down teams' abilities to play. It's high risk, high reward in, in some parts of it. But for me, that's, that's the biggest part. And defence wins you championships. Like that, that saying kind of it goes, goes in rugby, goes in many sports as well. And, and that was probably their biggest strength. They've always been ruthless with the ball and they've always been able to score tries. Against teams like La Rochelle, they let them back in and let them get tries. But today, they were incredibly greedy. We heard Robbie Henshaw talking during the week about being obsessed with this competition and he was saying it was a positive thing. And we often wondered, Fiona, whether this was something that was hanging over their heads. But the pressure valve is going to have been released today because this is a statement that they needed this as much as their fans here in the ground needed this. Yeah, they need to go on and win it now, to be honest with yeah. you. But, um, yeah, it's it's the monkey off their back that's been there for the last three years. And it's now they progress the next round against uh, Northampton or the Bulls. But it will it'll give them more confidence in that defensive system that, you know, that probably wasn't going 100% until this game. You know, we questioned whether it had bedded in fully. So that gives them more confidence again. But they certainly have to go on and win the, the tournament. That's the hard thing, Bernard. You know, you <laughs> go and you do a big day like today, then you still have two games to go and win this thing. It's not easy. No, but look at the home advantage and Croke Park. I mean, we were lucky enough to, to play in Croke Park. That is something special yeah. for an Irish rugby player. Take me into that. What, what's it like? Well, it's just oh. different because you grew up as a... Well, I grew up as a kid, obviously being a Gaelic football fan and 
thinking I, with La Carla border there was unlikely I was going to get to have big days in Pro <laughs> Park but I never would have thought I would have got to play rugby there and it is special it is yeah. special and like they're used to here and this is great but that's going to take it to another level and it's I, uh, my understanding of it is is that the try they got in the 83rd minute against Leicester in the group stages was one try more than Northampton which you know you, yeah. you think about it then you're ruthless at the end of a game in a group stage yeah. and that's the try that gets you home advantage for a semi-final which could tip the balance to get to a final and obviously Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and, and the chance of that silverware is, is massive but uh, yeah it's just, it's just phenomenal and Croke Park is absolutely special like I mean our generation got to play there this generation may whatever but who knows over the next 20-30 years how many te- times a rugby team will get to play there it's it I've had some great memories in 09, both in a Leinster and a, an Ireland jersey. It's it's a magnificent stadium. It's it's rare in rugby you get to play again, like in front of eighty odd thousand people. Firstly, um, and I think in the Irish psyche, it, it obviously holds a pretty special place. So, so for these players, I think Keane Healy is probably the only current player in this squad that has played there. And um, so I'm sure he'll be kind of um, telling them what that feeling and what to what to expect. Um, but for this side. This is a big game on a couple of different reasons. Yes, it's the monkey off the back, but if you're on, if you want to go the distance in this competition, you have to have these big, these big, this big game will stand to them, because um, you want to go up against the best sides. You want to go challenge them. They've got another challenge potentially. It's probably going to be Northampton uh, in, in the semis. And that's going to be a big challenge for them, and you don't get to the, the top of the mountain without these kind of big moments and this is a big moment for them and, and for this uh, this group of players. Yeah, look, it's probably nice to have something different as well to just re- replace this target because it's going to be hard. You know, this was their focus, Fiona. So to know now they've got Croke Park, two more games and then to Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But I think for them, Croke Park will feel like it's extra kind of special. Oh, it brings a new energy to it. You know, obviously a new surrounding. Hopefully it's a sellout crowd. It would be unbelievable if it was. But just even that new surrounding, the new energy that that brings and an opportunity to play there I only got to stand on the side of the pitch but uh, an opportunity to play there is unbelievable for any Irish person so I think they'll just be buzzing at that opportunity as well Well let's find out if they are because the man of the moment is with us Leo congratulations well done you've been waiting a while for this one how does it feel? Um, yeah listen the guys are pretty happy now yeah so um, big build up to the game this week so I thought they prepped well and like the main thing is the crowd here was unbelievable wasn't it like so it made it such a special atmosphere um, you know like not just today obviously there's been a fair bit of hype around the game um, probably from when I suppose you know the pool stage is over then the sort of the draw starts to come together and um, but yeah no listen two good teams going hard at it and yeah our guys are obviously delighted to get a win now We were just chatting here about the atmosphere the lads were talking about their Croke Park experiences obviously you'll have had that as well how much will you be looking forward to taking this show on the road with adding even more people to this atmosphere um, Yeah well hopefully they turn out again like that's the big thing like so um, yeah going to Croke Park will be amazing experience for guys yeah like obviously we were lucky enough to experience that at that stage in our careers Um and um, yeah, like as not many people gave us a chance that day. So, um, but yeah, no, it's an amazing, obviously, stadium, Crow Park. So for our guys to be able to experience, that'll be amazing. So, uh, we'll see how this sort of game goes tonight between Northampton and the Bulls. Uh, plenty of hype for that game as well, for different reasons. Um, so yeah, no, hopefully, it'll be a great occasion. Yeah. Leo, massive rivalry between La Rochelle and Leinster. Um, a lot of pressure. Uh, what, what was it like last five minutes actually kind of having a feeling that for once this game was in the bag I mean um, we'll all be so stressful as a pundit I can't imagine what it's been like as a coach um, well it was probably you know the, the, Look, the end of the first half if you, yeah but the end of the first half if you think what well, were 17 points ahead of that stage and they score you know it's sort of a bit of a nothing penalty there on the halfway line which leads to the kick to the 22 another penalty then suddenly they're under five and then suddenly you know, it's a 10-point game. And obviously, we've gone that eight points, nine points, ten points out there in halftime. Just, so just making sure we had the right mentality in terms of key playing. Maybe we were just you know, clamming up a bit in the past. And again, that's the learning for, particularly with some of the young players that we have over the, the last number of years. So if you think they've a layer and layer of experience and, you know, there was, so it's a totally different type of dressing room at half time to probably what we would have experienced last year and the year before. So because they've sort of been through it, they know what's required now. So, you know, and obviously when Ryan scores a try at the start of the second half, then you know, then we have that 17 point lead again. And you know, I think defensively, you know, we, we didn't sit off them. We would stay being aggressive and you know, even the way we give away some penalties which gets us in a bit of trouble at different stages, you know, the mindset to scramble was a hell of a lot better. So and that's the thing, like you go through these experiences like with players that come through, Academy, all the rest and 
you know, there's sometimes you've got to go through it to to really properly learn, you know what I mean? It's all very well talking about it. So, um, yeah, no, much better in terms of 80 minute performance. But, you know, obviously, Larry Shell have to travel. They were down in Stormers. But again, that's going back to the pool stages and the work that has to go into that period of the competition, which that's what makes the competition so unusual and unique, really, because obviously, you have your pool stages December, January break for two months for the Six Nations, and then it's it's the battle of seedings and I suppose that's why we're you know anyway why we're at here at home in front of whatever 50 plus thousand people which again we're unbelievably appreciative of so Leo, that's probably the main message from us I think we, we saw some amazing attack how happy were you mentioned defence there happy, how, how, how happy were you with the defence mindset and the aggression in um, the lads today yeah like it wasn't perfect now like it, and like we did give away some penalties you know probably some avoidable penalties and like that's the Lara Shell that type of uh, strangle team you know some big blokes in the back as we know um, and like when you get you down there like it's it's that can make it hard work and they can suck the life out of you a little bit as well but you yeah, know overall I think it was definitely a much better defensive performance so um, obviously to score 40 points against get shell is, is pleasing you know because again we probably struggled in that second half but again that's maybe is it a bit of a mentality thing from us that we just need to learn from rather than sort of shutting up shop and defending a lead you just need to keep going out and attacking the game so uh, but anyway it's job done and on to the next one. Two more and then you win it. Simple. <laughs> uh, well, I'm more worried about going to the Lions now next week. We're off to South Africa on Tuesday, so, um, which is, again, is a great challenge for us, isn't it? So, you know, like we, we've had a really good competitive squad and, you know, some guys will be itching for an opportunity now. Um, and it's trying to get the balance, isn't it, between freshness, guys need games and, you know, trying to manage the group over the course of the season. And, like, you know, credit to the, you know, the non-23 this week um, in terms of how they prepared the team. You know, so they did a great job of being La Rochelle this week and testing the guys during training, particularly Tuesday and Thursday. Thursday this week and you, know, you see the rewards from it because guys are familiar with some of those pictures and anyway it'll be there some guys will get an opportunity now uh, against Lions next week we obviously Stormers in the week after and try and keep fighting on two fronts again every team is you know that's still in the competition or in obviously the Challenge Cup as well um, that's the challenge isn't it trying to fight on two fronts and how you manage the group Nice place to be I would say Leo and you would have taken that at the start of the day so congratulations well done and uh, we wish you well we're going to have to leave it there